Namaste Coven, welcome to my channel and welcome to this brand new video. For those who have stumbled across me here today, my name is Bethany, I am the Yogi Witch, this is Little Luna, the resident familiar, and today I'm going to go through my five favourite ways to keep up self-care and take care of my mental health during the winter months. Now winter is a difficult season for many of us, you know, when we have the bad weather, the darker nights, it can feel like we've lost that drive, we've lost that energy and we are forced to stay indoors. And I think it is super important to keep up your energy and take care of your mental health now more than ever. When it is the summer, we have that natural energy of the sun to help heal, to help inspire and in the winter we have to look elsewhere to find that kind of positivity and to find that drive to get up each morning. So in this video, I'm gonna go through my five favorite ways that I like to take care of myself and just little inspirational ideas perhaps for you to take care of yourself this winter month. So grab yourself a cup of tea, grab yourself a cup of coffee and when you're ready, Luna and I will meet you back here so we can go through our self-care tips. that everyone will say to you, but it is really true, and that is getting outside and getting some fresh air. What are you doing? Oh God, you're cute. So getting outside for even just 20 minutes a day has incredible benefits to boosting up those serotonin levels and really kind of helping us feel invigorated and making us feel rebalanced. In a spiritual perspective, this is a really beautiful way to reset the system. So for those who don't know, I am an elemental witch and I do call upon the elements for a lot of my practice, both in yoga and in witchcraft. And part of my self-care routine in both winter and summer, obviously summer's a little bit but easier to do it, is to get outside. Now, I know how difficult this is when the weather is horrendous, and yes, when the weather is bad, maybe you do want to stay indoors, and that is absolutely fine, that's self-care too. But sometimes we just need that little bit of a push to get us out the front door, and to really embrace the elements for what they bring us. So like I said, they bring us that sense of grounding, that sense of rebalance, and it almost feels like they're kind of blowing away the cobwebs. Now, if you would like to delve a little bit more into your elemental witchcraft, and maybe it's something that's new to you, then winter is a wonderful time to do it. Like I said, in the summer, the sun naturally brings us healing, naturally brings us that energy, but in winter, we've got to search a little bit more for it. Embrace what the winter weather can do for you. So in really bad thunderstorms, use this time as a chance to meditate and to allow that electricity in the air to invigorate you, to really inspire you and to tap into that empowerment. When it's super windy outside, use that wind to get deep into your lungs and give you a chance to breathe and to cleanse all that negativity that's perhaps clung to you and it's making it hard to breathe and it's making you feel stressed out. When it's raining, give yourself a chance just to go out and stand in the rain, maybe with a coat on, obviously. But it gives you that sense of purification and it gives you that sense of kind of healing, you know, that gorgeous water element. Getting outside for five minutes, 20 minutes, whatever you can do is a really great way to reset. And also during this festivity, during the chaos of Christmas or whatever holiday you might celebrate, it is a time to give yourself that breathing space, which is so, so important during the winter months, during the festivities, to ensure that you're taking care of your mental health. So I will include some links below to some really great um, YouTube flow, YouTube flows, YouTube blogs and articles about elemental witchcraft, and I hope these prove useful to you. But number one is getting outside and getting fresh air. Okay, number two of this five ways of winter self-care is to embrace the darkness. Now, we are obviously in the winter months, as I've gone on and on about, and this is a time when nights are short, mornings are late, and sometimes it feels like we just don't see the sun, especially if you're working a nine to five. It can feel quite dreary. Now, this can have a major impact on our mental health, and being in the darkness can be quite frightening, both spiritually and physically, but this is a beautiful time to embrace that sense of darkness. So 
Over the winter months, it is a time of hibernation and it's also a time of reflection. We start to reflect on the year gone and we start to reflect on what the year, the next year, sorry, is bringing us. Now, this is a great time to delve into shadow work. Now, the inner shadow is composed of parts of you that you have chosen to reject or chosen to ignore subconsciously. Now, shadow work is a difficult practice to do. It's not for everyone, I've got to make that very clear. And sometimes some of the answers that come up from the questions you ask aren't what you wanted and maybe are things that, bye Luna, that you just didn't want to kind of delve back into. Now, shadow work is used a lot in counselling. I have done a lot of shadow work uh, over the past few years. And yes, it is very difficult, but it is very rewarding. I feel like I know myself a lot more than I ever used to. I know the things that trigger me and I know the things that, you know, I don't need in my life and things that I would like in my life. Now, you don't have to go as deep as shadow work, especially if maybe it's just not for you at the moment. And that is absolutely fine. Sometimes it finds you when you least expect it. But this is a great time to get into your journaling, get back to your book of shadows, start to write down your feelings, your everyday feelings, start to journal what's gone on in the day, maybe start to delve uh, into oracle cards or tarot cards or pendulums or anything like that where you start to ask questions, you start to listen to the answers. In the darkness, yes, it's hard to see, but that is when our third eye starts to open up and that is when we start to really connect with our spiritual practice, which is obviously such a beautiful thing to do. During the summer months, we do tend to connect more with a physical practice. We're out and about, we're embracing the sunshine and the winter is a beautiful kind of balance to that physical aspect to connect with the emotional and with the spiritual aspect. So again, I will include some links below about shadow work and hopefully they'll inspire you. But I do love this one. It's something that I do really rely upon over the darker months is to work with shadow work and to embrace the dark. My favorite thing of all, nourish yourself. Now, I mean really taking care of yourself. Winter is a time for hibernation. It's a time to rest, to restore, ready to take on the world again in spring and be reborn. Now, when I talk nourishing yourself, I mean really nourish yourself. Make yourself really hearty, good for you food, getting a lot of root vegetables in there, getting a lot of your greens in there to really kind of build up your digestive health, your gut health, which is super, super, super important. Oh, I love gut health. And to kind of allow yourself to just be. So the winter months are a time to heal and a great way of doing this is via your health. Now I don't mean, you know, having to eat salads every day. That's not what I'm talking about. You don't have to make yourself, I don't know what they're called, a smoothie bowl, something like that, ugh. Uh, no, I mean making yourself hearty food, good for you food, the food that reminds you of home, the food that makes you feel safe. So ironically, as I am filming this, there is cowl on the boil, uh, just in the kitchen, obviously. And cowl is a really traditional dish here served in Wales. It is a dish where you can use a variety of meat, or, you know, meat substitutes, lots of root vegetables, and it's something that just really quells my anxiety. When I was in university and I was super homesick, my nan made me the biggest batch of cowl, C-A-W-L, and froze it for me so I had portions that lasted me weeks. Every time that I felt really homesick, I would eat it and it would make me feel so good about myself. It was also a dish that I run to every time I'm ill or I'm just feeling a little bit down. So I do have cowl that my grandmother, my nanny, made for me on the stove. Now, you can nourish yourself in a variety of ways if working through kind of healing foods is not for you, and that's absolutely fine, you know, this is a free will. Maybe you nurture yourself through self-care techniques. Now, if you have followed me for a while, you know how much I love bath rituals. The bath for me is just everything. It's where I reconnect with myself, it's where I decompress, it's where I've been to the Real Housewives in New Jersey, and it is just my kind of quiet space. Now, bath, or baths or showers just become a part of daily routine and sometimes they can feel quite mundane like you almost have to force yourself to do it you know get yourself clean so you can go to sleep i say stop this 
treat yourself to a shower, treat yourself to a bath, and really kind of allow yourself to enjoy it. Maybe put 15 minutes on a timer and make yourself sit there in the silence or with some gorgeous music in the background and really connect with yourself. It's a beautiful time to work with bath salts, with lavender, with essential oils, to really kind of trigger a certain energy that you'd like to come out during your meditation of your bath ritual. I have posted a few spells working with Spellwork and I will post in the description box below uh, my peaceful and healing bath spell oil uh, that I filmed a few months ago. And this is a really great way to not only work with your witchcraft practice, but to also treat yourself to some really important self care. Also include a link to one of my favorite small businesses, which is Mooncraft and Magic. And they do incredible, incredible, incredible uh, full moon ritual boxes that involve uh, bath rituals. So number three, my darlings, is nourish yourself. is herbal witchcraft. So if you are new to your witchcraft journey, then maybe you're starting to take a little look around, starting to explore different stuff. And a beautiful thing to explore over the winter months is herbal witchcraft. So I've spoke of green witchcraft and foraging in my recent Mabon vlog. And this is something that I really encourage you to explore during these darker months. It's working with herbs, it's working with plants for medicinal and for magical purposes, using them in tonics and tinctures, using them in your foods, using them in just your everyday kind of life. This is just a really beautiful practice to explore. And I really encourage you to have a look at it during these documents. So I will include a link below to some books that I use my Green Witchcraft, also some vlogs. And yeah, just a disclaimer with Green Witchcraft, please only forage if you know how to do it safely. Do not poison yourself with some mushrooms or some berries. We are not on a Disney film. No bird's gonna come and save you. Make sure you forage. Uh, <laughs> I lost my words. Make sure you forage safely. So number four coven is Green Witchcraft. Okay, number five, but of course, is finding magic through movement. So during the winter months, this is a time where I actually really like to slow down my yoga practice. And I actually love to explore restorative yoga practice such as yin, and restorative yoga. You can find a whole bunch of these flows over on my channel at The Yogi Witch, but this is a beautiful time to hibernate and to reflect. When we have the sun shining above us, that is a time where we start to feel invigorated. We want to explore power yoga, we want to explore vinyasa yoga, and that is absolutely fine, especially if you need that fire during the darker months. But this is a great time to practice stillness and to slow down your yoga journey. So for those who don't know, recently I have torn my meniscus in my knee and hence why my leg just been extended for this type of joke. And I have been forced to slow down my practice, which at first was very, very difficult, but obviously I can't move it. So right now I am really delving into a lot of meditation and a lot of journaling work. And although it is difficult, I completely see the benefits of it and I feel so invigorated because of it. Now, when I talk about movement, it doesn't have to be yoga. Obviously, I do encourage yoga because I call myself the yogi witch, but obviously I encourage yoga because I am a yoga teacher, but this can be any form of movement. This can be walking, you know, connecting with that first self-care tip. This can be hits, this can be anything at all. Anything that gets the body kind of opening up those muscles, finding that space and creating that peace in the mind. So this is not a kind of, you know, summer body, encouragement no not at all no no this is a let's take care of the body so embracing both stillness and embracing both movement find that really gorgeous balance i for one am all for relaxing on the sofa and binge watching wednesday on netflix if you haven't seen it please watch it it's just everything but i do think that it's important to kind of open up the body, connect with those muscles, connect with those meridian points, connect with those chakras, and give yourself some TLC, TLC, whether that be five minutes, whether that be 50 minutes, anything at all. So if you're looking to create a yoga practice over the next few months, then I really 
encourage heading over to my channel at The Yogi Witch, where you'll find over 350 yoga flows, everything from Carmen yoga to beginner yoga to power yoga and everything in between. There's a whole bunch going on over there. I also upload three free flows every single week on my YouTube channel and I also have a brand new January course coming up called Move and Manifest. So over 30 days, we will come together as an online community to find our yoga practice, delve a little bit into our witchcraft practice and start to create a really beautiful year ahead for ourselves. So you can find out more about that in in the link in the description box below. But yes, without promoting myself too much, thank you for listening on to that. But yeah, number five, classic as always, is finding magic through movement. Thank you so much, my darlings, for tuning in today and for watching this brand new video. I really hope some of these tips help inspire you and help encourage you to really take care of yourselves during the winter months. If you have any other tips, I would love to know about them. Please let me know by commenting below or by sending me a message over at my Instagram at the Yogi Witch. But in a few days time, I will be having three brand new flows come up on my channel, all to do with the full moon. We've got a full moon journal prompt, full moon yoga flow and full moon oracle card reading. So keep an eye out for that. But thank you you so much my darlings and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Blessed be.